guys. Uh, my, the topic of our, my talk is the traumatic deltoid ligament injuries, repair or neglect. I'm Dr. Joseph Park, the uh, division head at the University of Virginia Foot and Ankle uh, Service. Here are my disclosures, none that are pertinent today, other than that I do help take care of our UVA collegiate athletes, which leads to uh, specific exposure to the deltoid ligament injuries, which we'll speak about. I'm coming to you today from the central part of Virginia, from Charlottesville, Virginia, the home of Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. There's a picture of his home at Monticello on the left. The deltoid ligament complex is a, a, a beautiful and mechanically sound structure, which works very well to stabilize the ankle, but when it goes wrong, it can really lead to quite a bit of dysfunction. So remember that the superficial deltoid comes from the anterior colliculus off of the medial malleolus, and it prevents Taylor external rotation as well as valgus tilt. The components of this ligament are the tibio-navicular, tibio-spring, tibio-calcaneal, and the superficial posterior tibio-taylor. The deep component comes from the posterior colliculus and prevents lateral and posterior translation as well as valgus tilt. The components of this are the deep anterior tibio tailor and the deep posterior tibio tailor. This x-ray, I think if you can remember these three values, I think this is a quick way to assess for ankle alignment on the AP radiograph. So in, for A, tib fib overlap should be greater than six millimeters. On B, the tib fib clear space should be less than six millimeters and the medial clear space C should be less than four millimeters or conversely or Another way to think about it is it should be less than the superior joint space. So briefly going through this, I'll go through a great case example to, to demonstrate the evolution of my practice. But this is a 53-year-old female nurse anesthetist who I work with almost every day in the operating room. She tripped over a tree branch and inverted her right ankle. She was unable to bear weight and uh, called me on my cell phone to tell me that she thought she might need to come to clinic. Uh, this is her radiograph here. You can see a significant displacement and medial clear space widening, as well as an avulsion of the medial malleolus that you can clearly see in the picture here. And here's the lateral view showing a small posterior uh, malleolar fragment. The diagnosis is a trimalleolar ankle fractured equivalent with complete deltoid ligament disruption. The plan was to certainly fix the fibula question of fixing the syndesmosis, question of fixing the deltoid. In my hands, uh, my athletes are all getting these deltoid ligament repairs. Why don't we fix the deltoid routinely? Well, Harper et al. wrote this paper in CORE in 1988, and it sort of became the standard that helped to shape our algorithm for how these fractures are treated. They looked at 36 patients with medial clear space, more than five millimeters, and they fixed the fibula. 15 of the 36 received syndesmotic fixation, and the outcomes at 13 months on average were 28 good, four fair, and four poor. Zero of 12 patients had Taylor tilt on valgus stress testing, and the authors did not describe medial instability or asymmetric valgus. However, 22% of these patients had quote unquote loss of reduction. And you can see here, if you look at the x-ray from that paper on the upper right, uh, that is the technique they used to fix this Weber C fracture. So I certainly think this is not a perfect paper, and I think basing our whole algorithm for treatment on this is, is concerning. Stromso et al. published this paper in JBJS British in 1995. Uh, there were 50 patients randomized to deltoid repair versus no deltoid repair. No patients in the no repair group required medial arthrotomy to reduce the ankle. And they found equivalent outcomes and stated that repair added 20 minutes of surgical time if the deltoid was fixed. So here's a picture of my uh, patient on undergoing uh, medial exploration. You can see here, this is our sort of anterior medial approach to the medial malleolus and to the deltoid. Here's a close-up picture showing the complete avulsion of that deltoid complex off the anterior colliculus. And a great study by Rosa et al. FAI 2019 compared ultrasound to stress x-rays. And what they found was that if the deltoid was uninjured, the stress test re resulted in 2.7 millimeters of medial clear space. A uh, partially torn deltoid led to 5.2 millimeters. And on ultrasound, a complete tear led to 5.8 millimeters of medial clear space. And so in my practice, 
again, treating many collegiate football players and other athletes, um, my, my sort of threshold has been six millimeters. So if they have more than six millimeters on, of medial clear space, I do proceed with a deltoid exploration and repair. And in my hands, I've yet to find a deltoid that's attached whatsoever to that anterior colliculus at this stage in my career. I don't tie the uh, suture anchors until the fibula is fixed anatomically, but I do uh, grab this tissue first so that I, it helps me with the reduction. Uh, so here you can see the suture anchors are placed and the, the I did not tie those anchors yet. I fixed her fibula anatomically using a position screw followed by a locking plate given a little bit of comminution that she had. Um, a tip is that it, th many of these plates are, are bent into valgus and if you straighten the plate, it acts as a spring effect and pushes the talus into varus. And here's her x-ray there, lateral view, six months post-op. And she did very well. She returned to a full work at three months post-op, did have some swelling at that point, but her ankle felt very stable, very little pain, and she has gone on to do extremely well. And since I see her every day, obviously it's even more stressful, but she is doing very, very well with this ankle. So here's a little more complicated case. So this is a 21-year-old uh, cornerback, a college football player, sustained a left ankle fracture dislocation during a nationally televised game. His ankle was reduced on the field by my sports partner and placed into a splint. Uh, he is a, was a preseason All-American and projected to go in the first round of the NFL draft. Here's a picture of his, uh, uh, of his x-rays taken in the stadium. And you can see he has a Weber C ankle fracture uh, that was well reduced by my partner. And so I'm not sure this shows the true damage uh, that he sustained. But the diagnosis here is a distal fibular fracture, Weber C with syndesmotic disruption and deltoid ligament rupture. And so my plan was, of course, to fix the distal fibular fracture. Should we scope the ankle? Should we place syndesmotic screws or use more flexible fixation? And should we repair the deltoid? So I think arthroscopy, I believe that's a, more, a very simple answer. Hinterman et al. in 2000 wrote this uh, very good paper in JBJS British. They looked at almost 300 ankle fractures and almost 80% of them had articular lesions. The highest incidence was in this exact type of patient, Weber C with a pronation external rotation mechanism with syndesmotic disruption. And unfortunately, you really do have to think about the NFL draft and combines. And in my opinion, a high level athlete with this level of fracture dislocation, you really have to document what the cartilage looks like. Uh, in terms of syndesmotic fixation, there was this excellent paper by Wood et al. And there's a lot of information on this slide, but really the thing I wanna show you guys is this, that even with two tight ropes, external rotation is not controlled even if you use two tight ropes, okay? And I think the reason for that is that the deltoid plays such an important role in blocking or controlling external rotation. I've done this technique for many of my elite athletes. I do a direct AITFL repair using this docking technique. I place a suture anchor into the fibula and dock it into the chaput tubercle of the tibia using a uh, interference screw type construct. And so the thinking here is that if the posterior uh, ligaments are intact, that you can control external rotation, which is why I think these patients hurt so badly, but you can control external rotation by closing down the front of the ankle. Uh, sh should you repair the deltoid? My, my colleagues at Duke uh, published this excellent paper looking at bimalleolar equivalent ankle fractures. They looked at 15 with transsynosmotic fixation and 12 with a deltoid repair. There's no statistically significant difference between the two groups. And their, th their conclusion was perhaps deltoid repair is equivalent to syndesmotic screw. I'm not sure that's actually what it means. I think it's possible that the external rotation stress test uh, may demonstrate syndesmotic injury or anterior deltoid injury. I actually think it's more deltoid than it is syndesmosis. Uh, Dr. Anderson, one of my mentors published this paper in 2015 identical fracture patterns in NFL players. They all underwent ankle scope, fixation of the fibula, tight rope, syndesmotic fixation, and deltoid repair. 14 NFL players, 86% returned to full play, all returned to running and cutting by six months post-op, and none had medial pain or instability. Average follow-up was almost two years. Here's a photograph of what that repair looks like. It's eerily similar to the one I just showed you. Uh, so for him, I did, I plan was uh, to go two days after the injury, we plan to do an ankle arthroscopy, fix the fibula, reconstruct the deltoid, do a direct repair with possible tightrope if, if necessary. Here are the pictures from his scope, a lot of synovitis there, but nothing 
scary laterally had a little bit of chondral scuffing but it was uh, not full thickness and it was actually quite superficial so it was just carefully debrided um, here's the medial approach to the deltoid ligament again very similar identical this is what it has looked like every time for medial clear space more than six millimeters here's the medial malleolus the talus and the deltoid labeled here here's uh, me marking the fracture level we fix this anatomically using a position screw and a locking plate and then repair the deltoid with two suture anchors here Again, remembering I don't tie the anchors until the fibula is fixed. So for the syndesmosis, I reduce it by placing an S mark around the malleoli uh, to close it down circumferentially. I place a drill hole in for a 3.5 millimeter interference screw type, type construct. And then I loop very strong suture, braided suture through the holes of the distal fibular plate and dock them into the tibia. And here's what this looked like intraoperatively. And postoperatively, here's what he looked like in recovery. And he went on to heal this uneventfully. Here he is at six months. And he was treated two weeks in a cast, followed by progressive weight bearing in the boot at six weeks. I let him cut and run by four and a half months non-contact. He was cleared for full, full football activity at six months post-op. And he was drafted in the fifth round of the NFL draft. And he returned to play 10 months post-op. So in conclusion, if the ankle is unstable to valgus or external rotation stress, by definition, the anterior deltoid is disrupted. More than six millimeters of medial clear space likely represents complete deltoid rupture. This has confirmed, been confirmed in my clinical practice many, many times. So do repair it if you're looking at it. If the fibula is broken, it must be fixed anatomically. I would strongly recommend ankle arthroscopy in an elite athlete in a displaced fracture and return to play it can be anywhere from six to 12 months. Here's our UVA foot and ankle division, and thank you very much for your time.